Hey guys, uh, so I want to do a video on some of my Xbox 360 controllers, um, mostly because I, I mean, I do tinker with these things quite a bit, and they never seem to make it on my channel for whatever reason. Um, most of that is because I've done most of my tinkering before I started my channel, but that's not entirely true because I built this controller after my channel and so on and so forth. Um, but we'll get to this one in a bit. I want to talk about my original controller first, this one here. Uh, this is the one that I do most of my playing with, and right now it is synced up to an Xbox that I don't even have plugged in. Um, I have two Xbox 360s and one of these bad boys. Um, well, actually I have quite a bit more than two, but I have two that I actually use. One of them uh, that is just a stock console that I can take it online, do whatever I want with, Xbox Live, etc. And then the other one that I have actually plugged in right now is a JTAG unit so I can run it off my SSD and install games on it. Or excuse me, it's not JTAG, it's a, it's a RGH2 unit, but same thing in the end. Um, but the problem with this controller is that it doesn't sync. It is currently synced up to the Xbox that's not plugged in, and I can't do it. This button doesn't do anything, so I need to fix that. Um, but I don't know. I just figured it might be cool to show off one of my modded controllers here. This is just a regular wireless Xbox 360 controller uh, that I have converted over to internal rechargeable battery with a USB Type C port. Um, one problem I discovered after I did the mod is that if your controller's not synced up to anything, it's impossible to turn off without just letting the battery die. So I ended up having to redo the back cover here and just add a power switch there. But that just disconnects the battery from the controller so you can turn it off, but you can still charge it up. And it's USB Type-C. It plugs in in the bottom because I didn't want to get rid of this port even though I have no idea what it's used for if not charging your internal battery pack, which I don't have anymore. And um, I don't know, I, I never installed a light pipe or a charging indicator. It's kind of hard to tell. I should probably do that too while I'm at it. But um, I think I'll save that for another day. What I need to do with this one is basically just fix my uh, sync button, whatever the heck's wrong with it. So. Let's get started on that. <clears throat> Just going to go ahead and plug that back in. I am missing a screw, and the screw in the battery compartment is no longer there because I put the uh, charge module there. But these consoles usually use security torx bits, or consoles, controllers, excuse me. I believe it's a T10, nope, T9, yeah, it's a T9 bit, or TR9 for security. But for those wondering how I did this internal mod here, All it is is just a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery wired into the. Uh, I didn't use the. Oops. I didn't use the rechargeable battery connectors. In fact, I removed that entirely to make more room. I just used the alkaline connectors and I did install a diode to drop the voltage a little bit. So if you're familiar with my channel and you've seen me do Game Boy Advance mods, it's the exact same thing. Alright, this, if I recall correctly, will come right off. Oh, and I took a, uh, a cheap rechargeable battery pack and just carved out the inside so all it has is the outside and the button. But this comes up and I left myself plenty of slack on the wires. So you can see what I did, I just desoldered that connector soldered the uh, positive up to a diode to the positive on the board and then the negative straight to the board and that's it. 
Uh, I also modified this controller with um, new LED lights, so it has white LEDs instead of the green stock ones. And if I can get it out, what the heck? There we go. And I have uh, PlayStation style thumbsticks on it. All right, the button itself is fine, so it must have just been installed wrong. It's probably an easy fix. Let me get a spudger here. Really, I just want to get back to playing Forza Horizon 4. I need to fix at least one of my controllers to do that. Okay, that's in there. That's in there. And it still feels like it doesn't work. The board moved as soon as I put it down. This is not great. I need this little nubbin right here to not be underneath the board but on top so that it clicks. Okay. Let's put some screws in and try it out. Oh, see, I think it moved while I was grabbing that screw. Shit. This is frustrating. Probably worth just replacing this whole top part. Oh great. I gotta pull this whole thing out because one of the button membranes fell down. For some reason this is stuck down. Right, but maybe that's good enough. So I just need to bend that up. I might end up installing just another button. I don't really want to, but I'd rather be able to sync my controller. Maybe it'll stay. That looks good this time. Probably just something I have to be aware of if I need to take this controller apart again. Oh, look at that. I managed to lose another screw. Oh, there it is. I think it was in this side. I think the reason the screw's not in there is because the screw post is broken. Not because I just lost the screw. Alright. So if all is well, I should be able to switch it on. 
buttons feel good. Let's turn it on. And does it go? Oh, it goes into sync mode now. Let's see if it syncs. Nice. Why is it controller three? All right, hang on, let me unplug my other controller. And restart this. Now it's two. That's still not right. Seems to work though. Yeah, yeah. I should probably turn that off. Seems to work. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, works for me. Cancel that. Okay. Let's move on to the other controller. So I usually keep this thing plugged in, but if I'm using it on PC, there's no drivers for it that I know of, so it doesn't really matter. And it needs to unplug to charge. Might as well charge the controller. I have no idea when the last time I charged it was. Anyway, let's move on to this one. So this is not a wireless controller. This is actually a wired controller. And this controller uh, was actually a special project that I was working on uh, with one of the folks from the Game Boy Discord. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned him before, and I'm, I'm sure you've even seen some of his projects before. Uh, it goes by the handle HDR, and this is just a USB Type-C controller. And we have it wired up so that it works in both orientations. It works on both computer and Xbox. Uh, zero ish, well, Xbox 360. I don't think it works on Xbox One. Um, I don't know, I've, I've just been loving this controller. I bought on AliExpress the, um, the special Halo Edition front shell, and you can buy that, so it has the uh, transforming D-pad, but it's just gimmicky bullshit. And um, I don't know, the controller's been fine. My biggest issue is that my uh, button, as you can see, there's like no travel, and it just feels very extremely unpleasant to use. This one, completely fine. This one, you have to like really mash it and it's it's kind of throwing my game off and I'm not really happy with it. So let's see if we can't fix that. This one is also probably an easy fix. So we'll go ahead and drop some new LEDs in this one. Um, but we need to take this apart. Unlike the wireless controllers, the wired controllers use Phillips screws. Looks like it's a PH1. Yep. And this way you'll be able to get a nice up close look at the USB C mod we were working on. It didn't really, um, I don't know, didn't really take off because the ports that you have to use to get it to work right are kind of a pain in the ass to track down, kind of a pain in the ass to solder, and they're not very durable. I've been using mine for about a year. I haven't had any issues, but I'm not rough on my controllers at all. Um, I know HDR has mentioned that he's broken a couple of them so far. I think. At least one of them. And the problem is um, these ports are designed to use so that they're supported by the housing of the device and we just have a 3D printed bezel to fill up that space there. But anyway, you can tell this was originally a white controller because of the gray 
headphone jack. There we go. Oh shoot, this isn't even one of my mod ones. This is my original prototype. <laughs> well, that explains why it still works fine. This one I just hand wired. There's, uh, we actually had a PCB made up for this. I think I have one that I never used. I actually made two of these controllers, but I use this one because I like it better. Yeah, here we go. So here's the bezel that is printed up. It should just slot right into the, uh, into this part. Yep. And then the bottom casing, you actually have to file quite a bit out to get it to fit, but once you've got it all filed, together. Oh. Believe it or not, this is actually much easier to do if you are actually assembling the controller, not just the housing. But it'll go in there, I think. I don't think it's in the right spot. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's better. But nonetheless, I think you get the idea. Uh, but the thing is, is these ports just kind of straddle the edge of the board and there's if you have something plugged in there's a lot of torque on these solder joints and it just doesn't work too well um, this one my prototype actually doesn't work on a USB-C to USB-C connection here because I never included the resistors Oh, the cable is just barely not long enough. But if you plug it in, you get nothing. But the um, the PCB version, this one, does have the built-in resistor, so it'll work with a Type C based host. Oh wait, that's what I put away. Okay. Anyway, I digress. Let's uh. Here's some of this out here. So my issue was the shoulder bumper and both of these buttons are fine. So my issue might have been with the part that I have managed to lose. There it is. This part. I don't see any issues with the buttons themselves. Let me try putting this back together. I kind of wish I hadn't flipped this up and just dumped everything out, but... Oh well. Oh, and just a quick note. These transforming d-pads are only compatible with front shells that are designed for them you can't use a regular front shell with the transforming d-pad or vice versa how does that go what am i doing wrong here does that go on that doesn't make sense Maybe I had that right, whatever. That just seems weird to me. But that's what I get for not paying attention. Okay. And of course this is all aftermarket because like I said, this was a white shell or a white controller. can see the problem here. The button itself is just sticking on the 
housing. So when it's all screwed together, it's probably could have just backed a screw off and that would have been fine. Still doesn't feel great, but I don't know that there's going to be any getting around that. Okay, let's let's do some mods then, yeah. I'm gonna take these off so I don't ruin them. Accidentally just broke that off. Hopefully it was just glued down. Yeah, this one I have wired up with individual wires, so I'm not. If I break it, oh no, I have a spare. Who cares? But. For not to. Let's install some LEDs, that'll be fun. I have yellow, blue, green, not green, white, not white, and red. I'm thinking with this shell, blue would be the way to go. Yeah, the only other LEDs I have are entirely too big. That's fine. Actually, at some point, while I'm thinking about it, I am going to have to replace this uh, joystick in this controller. The left one is fine, I think, but the right one has a massive dead zone and it doesn't center the way it should. It's fine in most games, but if you've ever played Elite Dangerous with a controller, that is not the controller to play with, I'll tell you. Though for the most part, I also do use some PlayStation controllers. And I have an Xbox One controller and a Steam controller around here somewhere. But I genuinely just stick to this one because the USB Type-C is just so much easier. Let's deal with frickin' mini USB. Like, what kind of garbage is that? Or I suppose you could sync it over Bluetooth, but that never works. All right, so, even though it's labeled on the board, let's go ahead and give it a test out right here. I think I have that backwards, yes I do. Because it's labeled on the board. Or my multi, oh yeah. It's lighting up, you can just barely see it. Just flip that up, sorry. Alright. A little bit better light here. Move that so I don't hurt myself. Okay. So yeah, like I was starting to say, I think, um, when given the option, I like to try and salvage stuff like this, but with surface mount LEDs, it's so difficult. So, I'm just going to put a big old blob of solder on it. these and I guess we'll use that one let me tin both of these And 
let's see what side is what. So if I recall correctly, I always have this problem. I can never remember which side is which. I'm pretty sure it points towards the ground. So if we can see, if we can focus on that. Probably not, it's a bit close. There we go, you can see there's that little T-shape. Oh, fuck. Squeeze too hard. Okay, there we go, I found it. Oh, I had it right and then I had to get greedy. There we go. This is identical the process of uh, Game Boy Advance LED modding. It's not going to plug in that way. Well, I saw it come on for a second, but apparently this is controller 2 now. Cool. Let's do the rest. I should have mentioned this before, but you should probably always start with uh, Diode 4, just in case something goes wrong. That way you don't entirely mess up your controller. Okay. Now, like you find out, it's entirely too easy to rip up pads or something. And the off chance you can't fix it. That way you don't completely ruin it. Okay, here's another one. Can't see that because it's not focusing. Come on. Come on. There we go. You can see the green arrow is pointing towards the uh, pointing away from my tweezers. So it's upside down, but I'm going to have to try and flip it over. Now it's backwards. So, there's definitely an easier way to do this. And this is not it. But let's try it, let's see what happens. Okay. Two more. I keep picking these darn things up backwards. Oh, and I just lost that one. Yeah, I have no idea where that one went. Step to the sticker. Nope. What the hell? Oh, it's right there. Man. Found it. Okay. And one more. 
They don't have to be perfect because the um, the front shell should diffuse all the issues if they're off center. Though admittedly, they should at least be flat. What the? F I don't know why it's making that noise. Somehow got the LED stuck to my solder. All right, if there was ever an LED I cooked, that would be it. But I think we're good. I think I saw all four, come on, let me try again. Yep, I think we're good. Let's put it back together. <laughs> ah, fuck. Drop the shoulder buttons. This shell also came with these uh, like clear thumbsticks. They're a little bit slicker than the texture on normal thumbsticks, but I don't mind them. Okay, I think we're good. One thing I will say um, about the aftermarket shells is they're actually really decent. I mean, you can still tell the difference between like an OEM shell and an aftermarket shell, but I mean, at least with the aftermarket shells, it's still a good controller, you know? I just wish they came with the uh, stickers too. That'd be kind of neat. I bought this controller used, so it didn't, you know, the previous owner had already torn off the stickers or to transfer them over. Why is this not going in? It's fighting me. There it goes. And that one went in no problems. I think they're all in. My left clicker bumper is still good, but my right one is still not good. Back that off a hair. And it's even worse. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I think I'm gonna have to like file this, figure out where it's rubbing and file it down. But in the meantime, that looks pretty cool. Everything seems to still work. Come on. The button does still work. Let me uh, pause and you can hear. It's working. I just have to really mash it. Where's this one? I just press and it's fine. So let's try that one more time. Really frustrating pulling this thing apart and putting it back together over and over. Oh, you know what? I have spare parts. might be the way to go. Alright. So I don't know if the problem is the top or the bottom or the shoulders themselves. In here, that looks that looks like a perfect fit, and this one, for reference, also looks fine. Let's pull this out then. Oh wait, hang on. I think I found it. It is the bottom shell. Or the shoulder, I'm still not sure. But I think we just need to file down this very edge here. And I think that should do it. Don't even need to file it much, it looks like. My best not to nick the button either. <laughs> Very soft plastic. That is much better. Okay, let's try it out now. Good lord, if that was it. Just that freaking hair of material. Alright, why aren't you going? There it goes.
Nope, that wasn't it. I'm just squeezing the controller. Well, shoot. Okay. Plan B. Hang on. Alright, so I've got several options here. I've got this controller, which works perfectly fine and has already been converted. And this one should use the resistors, so plugs in just fine both ways. And I could just keep this one on my desk and that'll completely solve my issue. This one is completely stock aside from the USB Type-C conversion. It even has a sticker on it. Alright. I went and found my um, spare parts here and this thing is very difficult to look at because it's reflecting all of my lights back into my eyes. Uh, but this doesn't have shoulder buttons. I suspect because... Oh, but I use black buttons here. Hmm. This must be the regular casing for this. That's not going to help us. I have this because the AliExpress seller shipped me two of them for some reason. But, oh, I suppose I can show the... Uh, the difference between the transforming D-pad cutout and the regular D-pad cutout. Just for reference. That doesn't help us. Over there. We have in here controller parts. I see a D-pad and some triggers, but I think these are just the parts from my other controller. I have this. So I have white shoulder buttons. Oh, this looks like the original shell for this. So maybe I can put back the original shoulder buttons. Oh, it does have stickers. I should transfer those over. Interesting, that says Xbox 360 and that says Microsoft. Hubs up! Okay, sorry. Getting distracted. Uh, okay. Also have a whole bunch of D-pad, or joysticks. Here we go. Gold. Ugh. Well, that's what I have. Don't have to use it, just have to try it. Even though the uh, top bezel is different, you can still use that. It'll just have the holes. But we'll just use this. Wasn't I just saying that the uh, aftermarket shells are actually quite decent? Apparently, they are except for the buttons. <laughs> okay. I don't actually hate that. Oh, but it's still really not great. Okay. Plan C? D? I don't know. Let's try this thing. I bought this a while back. This is an actual, legitimate VGA cable. No, I'm kidding. This is an actual, legitimate um, wireless Halo Edition controller. I never got it to work. No idea what's wrong with it. Um, actually, let's try it out again. What's the worst that could happen? Hang on, let me grab some batteries. All right, so I found this bad boy at Goodwill for four dollars, or for five dollars. I couldn't not buy it. Ah, what is wrong with me? 
No, I'm kidding. This is probably for the best that I don't keep batteries in these. If I'm not using them. Alright, so this thing, if I recall correctly, I could just never get it to sync. And you can see it's blinking. And it goes into sync mode. And my wireless adapter is looking, but nothing. And yes, these do actually come like that with the blue LEDs. Come on. Go into sync mode. There we go. Yeah, still nothing. I don't know. I don't know if it's not getting a signal or what's going on, but I could never get it to work, so I just pulled it to bits and left it that way. But let's try. It's cool. It has this like this white PCB whereas the normal controllers are green. So it was kind of a bummer when I couldn't get it to work. And I'm getting ideas, things I want to try. But nothing looks funky on it. There's no water damage. I mean, it's certainly gross. I never cleaned it, but Anyway, sorry. Keep getting distracted. This video is already long enough. Oh, and see, that that's what the wrong bezel looks like on these. But that still feels really terrible. So that tells me it's not my button. It must be either the top or the bottom shell. Let's try this. I think this will go on. Oh, shoot. My USB port doesn't fit. Okay. That's okay, because I found the original shell. I can just pull that out. That's fine. Well, good thing I'm testing with the prototype one. Oh, it still doesn't fit. Shoot. I'll have to test one side at a time then. That's better. But it's still not. Okay, let's try with the original buttons. Sorry, I know this is a terribly long video, and I'm definitely not making this just to pad my video count. Uh, a couple of these wires just isn't long, aren't long enough. That's fine, but now I 
I still don't have a click. I mean, I have the button travel. But no click. <sighs> okay, I think I'm gonna have to pause here and just, I don't know, I'll, I'll be back in a few seconds, I guess. All right, I think I've made a discovery, and I think it's just a combination of factors. Ultimately, it might just be the button itself that isn't giving me the feedback that I want. Because even though it clicks when it's apart, I don't know, it, it doesn't, it, it still doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna try something, and I have actually done this before. I'm just gonna unplug these stupid things. Come on. Let's see how far I can get. I'm just gonna replace the stupid tech switches. So you may remember these from the uh, Game Boy Advance video I did. The tech switches. Same issue here. These nubbins are a little bit too long, but screw it. Let's see what happens. Right? I can always cut them down. Um, you can get these from retro modding, but they just get them from DigiKey, and here's the part number up here. Uh, 450167ND. That'll get you these. They're dirt cheap. Um, but to get to these tax switches, we need to remove the triggers. Which is always annoying, but... No too big of a deal. Oh, fuck. Don't lose that spring. Oh, there it is. Alright. I think this honestly doesn't come out without desoldering the actual trigger thingy. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay, fine. I'm a lot better at this than I used to be, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. What the hell did I drop now? Ta-da! You know, I just had a thought. Um, let's do one side at a time. Come back and decide the other one later. All right. I'm thinking we could probably do the same thing here. Do the big old blob of solder. Or two big old blobs of solder. Yeah.
Come on. I think this is a ground plane or something. So there's an absurd amount of solder that is not coming out of this hole. Let me crank the heat up. We are now at 709 degrees Fahrenheit, which is absurdly hot. Add a little bit of flux. There it goes. Turn that back down before I forget. Okay. All right, so that's the original switch. Feels fine. Uh, this one is probably better. All right, I'm not even gonna bother with the, uh... oh, that's much nicer. I'm not even gonna bother with the trigger. I'll put that back on later. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even come close to fitting. <laughs> That's kind of what I figured would happen. Okay. Just gonna give it a little brisk here. Might need to trim it just a little bit shorter. Button's not resetting. Just just pushing the button into place hits the switch. Yep. That seems kind of nice. Let's try it out. Oh no, it's still awful. <laughs> I feel like the whole button is rocking around, or the whole plastic part is rocking around the tack switch. I need to trim more. There it goes. Ooh, that's nice, that's nice.
Hey! Oh, it worked the once. Maybe it just needed to break in. Yeah, there we go. I'm okay with that. Oh god. Oh god, that's my throttle, and I have no control. Button works great, though. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm gonna do the other one now. Make them both nice and clicky. Okay, so that was it. It was a combination of factors. Oh, now everything's falling. The problem is, I had a stack of projects on my desk that I was working on, and I decided, hey, you know what? Those folks who watch my YouTube channel probably want to see me tweaking my Xbox 360 controller. So I just shoved everything out of the way and started filming. I have lots of cleaning I need to do after this. Alright, so what do I need to do? I need to remove the other trigger. Clean up that solder. Just add a little bit of flux to my wick here. It always works better that way. Boom, all three done. All right. Here, instead of batteries, let's set that on. DSi consoles. That'll be fine. They don't work anyway. Well, one of them does. I need to get like a PCB vice or something. That should help with my desoldering. Issues. I 
Okay. I was just using the screwdriver because I'm sure that button was real hot. Did clear. All right, where'd that last button go? There it is. Right, so now we need to trim that to the same length, more or less. I should probably do test fits to make sure. So trim that a little high. Oh, and just for reference, you are not supposed to do that with these buttons, by the way. The idea is that you order the correct buttons, the, the correct length buttons that you need, not just cut them to fit. But but I will add that it's been fine for me so far, so yeah. It's a good thing I left that one a little proud. All right. Put this back together. Oh, hey, wait, I have something I've, I've been meaning to install but never did. Black parts, black replacements. That's the wrong one. It's the one we want. And that just goes in there like that. Gotta solder that back down. Oh. Shoot, I just hit my brand new phone with my soldering iron. That was excellent. I'm sure it's fine, but now my screen protector has that ugly mark. Ah. Damn it. Oh well.
There we go. Not that it matters too much. I don't think you can see through the back on this thing anyway. But, but shut up. I like it. Fun any further than I already have. There we go. Put this thing back together for the last time. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, stop it. Never mind. I was freaking out about something that. Whatever. Apparently, someone's trying to get me to play with them. But I can't play. My controller is still in pieces. just need to replace the headphone jack and we can pretend this controller was never even white to begin with. Actually that's not fair. I think some of the black ones even came with that gray. are nice and tight. Nice and tight. Turn the iron off because I forgot about doing that earlier. I think my battery is still charged. Oh no, it's done charging. So I don't feel bad about unplugging it. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, I guess we're going to be playing too. all working. Ooh, that's not great. I mean, it's working, but it's 
I think I need to trim it just a hair. Because it's clicking sometimes. If I hit it here, it doesn't click, but it still works. Oh, this one's the same problem. Damn it! One more try. I think this is why I never really film Xbox 360 videos, because this is what happens. Instead of trimming more off the buttons, I'm just going to shave this down a little bit. I should trim the buttons, I really should, but I just, I don't know. Should be using a flat file. There we go. Get this one a little bit more. The problem is, if I don't put all the screws in, I can't be sure that the shell isn't, like, flexing or anything like that, causing any interference issues. like it went in cross-threaded, which isn't too big of a deal since it's just screwing into plastic, but it will break the uh, screw post if I'm not careful. I mean, I do just have another shell, but I'd rather not just have to use it because I was being impatient. Oh. 
right. Now it works if I hit them right at the tops, but not on the outsides. But this one works both ways. I'm going to chalk that up to this being aftermarket. Oh, but now this one has the... Oh, now it's working. Never mind. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Controller seems to work though, so... Okay, I think I'm at my wit's end here. I don't know that I can keep messing with this and get any further other than just trimming these down again. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Back that off a turn. Yeah, there we go. Now it's working perfectly. <laughs> Easy solution, right? Alright, cool. I'm done with that. That's two controllers fixed. I'm going to go terrorize the countryside in Forza Horizon. Y'all have fun now. All right, so I probably should have been filming this, but I I was just poking around. I didn't think anything I was trying was actually gonna work, but I got my uh, limited edition controller to actually pair. Uh, I haven't put it together and tested it yet, but um, got my uh, wireless adapter here. That's what it's connected to. I've got another controller right here that, this is the problem with um, nickel metal hydride batteries is apparently they're not, they're slightly not long enough. So if I move the controller, it'll uh, turn off. But these two are paired. Uh, so I can try unpairing that, unpairing that, and then I can uh, repair. got the top one and then I got the bottom one so now this one's player three that one's player four let's try plug in that should be player two now yeah buddy all right so just a summary of the issue and I'll, I'll throw an overlay over here so you can see what was going on um, my limited edition controller for whatever reason it just wasn't pairing uh, and I, I did film it and I did compare it to my bottom one here and you can see that when it goes through its pairing sequence the lights spin significantly faster and it doesn't quite uh, I don't know the pairing sequence doesn't last as long like it's only it's only like 10 or 15 seconds or something and so if I tried pairing both of these at the same time this one would still be spinning and spinning and spinning and this one would spin a few times and then it's done um, now I took this controller apart, this is the silver one that I had earlier. I took this apart just to, you know, give me something to compare because I was going to start poking around with the multimeter and see if I couldn't figure out what specifically is wrong with it. And um, well ultimately it turns out I wasn't the first one in this controller. Now I don't know if these LEDs are original, I don't know if they're, I'm assuming they're supposed to be white because it, it looks right. And especially with the blue diffuser here. You see it looks pretty cool. At least I, I think it, I don't know. But regardless, it looks like someone was in here and they took a hot air gun to this thing. Because as you can see, these these little plastic nubbins are, are kind of melted over. That's not what they're supposed to look like. If you look at a controller that I'm pretty sure no one has ever been into besides me before, you can see they're actually plastic clips that go through the motherboard and this is for the um, the rechargeable battery connector on the back 
And, uh, I don't know, I'm guessing they just damaged something. Uh, but what got me thinking, because it was spinning so much faster, you know, initially I dismissed that, oh, well, it's just a new model of controller, maybe they sped that up for whatever reason. But this controller is uh, the same model, more or less. It looks like it has a slightly different revision PCB, but this controller itself is actually likely newer because this is a Halo 4 limited edition, and this is that uh, silver transforming D-pad one that they came out with really late in the lifespan of the Xbox 360. Nonetheless, um, I was thinking, well, those should probably be the same speed then. I have no idea what happened, but my thought process was, okay, well, maybe it's running at the wrong clock rate. Let's try swapping out this crystal. And so I had my soldering irons going. I was, I was trying and trying and trying to get that desoldered, but I just, it, it wasn't happening. Um, I don't know if you guys have never seen underneath one of these crystals before. It's just this long rectangular pad that's about this long. It goes about halfway through the crystal. Let me focus here. So from, it would be in between my tweezers and I just, I wasn't able to transfer enough heat. There's two of them, one on the bottom, one on the top. And that's, that's just how the pads are on those uh, crystal oscillators. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but you need hot air to desolder them. So I guess that's pretty much what my thought process was. Um, someone had used hot air on this thing and maybe that somehow damaged the crystal. So I was going to just try swapping it out, but I, I couldn't get it. The, it was... It was just not happening. Um, my irons weren't able to put out enough heat. It would help if I could, uh, basically if I had hot air. And I'm finding that a lot of my projects are uh, running into dead ends because of that specific phrase. It would be so much easier if I had hot air. Um, so anyway, I just decided to skip that and uh, try something else but I tested it after I tried desoldering it, so I have new fresh solder on these joints. That's why I'm cleaning off all this flux right now. And lo and behold, when I tried it out, it seemed to work. So that must have been it. This crystal had, uh, I don't want to say come off because it definitely did not come off, but maybe, you know, one of the joints was like halfway undone. And so it just wasn't making a good contact anymore. And when I had resoldered it, that fixed the issue. So now it seems to work. I'm going to uh, clean it up, put it back together, and I'm done with this controller. It's fixed. I've really got to clean up these disgusting triggers, so I'm going to I'm going to do that off camera because this is going to take me a while. But I don't know. I just just wanted to update. I've I've fixed three controllers so far, and I have been playing quite a bit of Forza with this thing. It's completely fine. I'm not worried about the buttons at all. It's so much better than it was, and uh, everything on it's working, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. But otherwise, um, I know that this has been a super, super long video, guys. And um, you know what, I'm not sorry, because I'm not forcing you to watch it. This is basically just a what the hell is Mako doing at his desk video, and uh, well, now you know. So, if you've stuck with me this far, thanks for watching. Thanks, thanks for letting me provide a little bit of background noise. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to end the video here. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.